In this video we'll show you how we can draw up a shape that contains an ellipse and then pass it through to the uh, machining software in Partmaster for lathes. Okay, so we've started the, uh, the CAD system, so I'll start a new drawing. And we've got an ellipse function here, so we choose that. And then the properties, we need to give it the major and minor diameters. So the major diameter can be 100 and the minor can be 75. Okay, so that's going to produce an ellipse, and if I switch on near snap, that will snap onto the date and position in the center of the drawing. Okay, so it could be that, that the ellipse is part of um, uh, uh, a different shape, so we can just draw something else which uh, uh, turns it into a more regular kind of a thing. Okay, so uh, what we'll do then is uh, I'll draw a line through the center line there and then another line at 90 degrees to that and then I'll draw some lines which are parallel to that so if I want another line here which is say 15 millimeters above there and then we'll have another one which is 65 okay and then we'll have a line to the left of that say 30 millimeters and then we'll have a line parallel to that and I'll set that using my cursor to be just there okay so uh, the other thing that we might want to do is draw a line which is tangential to the top of that so if we do that we we'll use the line tangent okay now the ellipse that we've created there is made up of tangential arcs. It's not an approximation, it's a proper ellipse. So if I go to view near points, we can see the center points of the arcs and we can see the end points. So that we know that we're getting a proper ellipse there. Okay, so next thing would be to trim up the shape. So I'm using the intersect uh, with trim routine. So we just trim the items as we need to and then we might also want to put a fillet in here so the size is five millimeters so we could have a fillet there and we might want a chamfer on the end okay so we have the chamfer just there and then if we just zoom in then we can just uh, trim these parts so trim that line to that arc okay so that's done that and then we just delete the bits that we don't want I mean the rest of it we can leave because it's not going to interfere with anything but if we do want to delete them then we can do there we are and we'll have another line parallel to this one and we'll have that to the left, say 65, there we are, and then we just trim up these bits here, there we are, and just, just for clarity we'll just delete these bits that we don't want, it won't do any harm to leave them there but it's nice just to have a nice clean drawing. Okay, so now that we've got that, we need to turn that into a profile, so we can pass that through into the machining software. And to do that, the first thing is to set the datum. So we'll have the datum, so that's going to be ZX0. And then this will become a profile, which will start here. And the end point of the profile is there. So that's produced that profile. Now we take that through, and we'll say that turn ellipse even better if I spell it correctly and take that through into machining okay so check on the tool change position make sure that the uh, Z values and the X values are such that when the tool machine goes to a tool change position uh, we're not going to run into problems with any of the tools fouling the work pace. Okay, so that's the shape there. Then we'll define a few tools. So let's have a standard turning tool, CNMG, 80 degree. 
and then we'll select that tool for use switch on constant surface speed set the feed rate and switch on the coolant and then to do that we can use the turning cycle to turn from the position there to say just past that uh, chamfer and we'll give it a finishing allowance I'll make this quite big so that we can see it on the screen okay so that's just in uh, center line mode so if we switch on the tool animation so obviously we can set up the cut depth and any other finishing allowances that uh, we need for that shape now if this was an internal feature we'd do exactly the same thing but just draw it as an internal and the system we just calculate its tool path based on that. So that could be the roughing pass, we might want uh, another tool, let's say it's going to be a 55 degree tip and we'll select that tool for use and then we'll just do a finishing pass which is profile turning. Uh, so when we profile turning that we can start off along this span here so span number one is from the beginning there so we can start off at span number two and we'll finish at this span here which will be span 11. I can switch on the span numbering so I can find out exactly which span is which but we'll have a parallel approach to there say three millimeters and then when it finishes there we'll have uh, a parallel runoff to that. Okay so that's just doing a simple um, profiling operation. If we wanted to drill a hole down the center of there we would define a tool, give it the diameter that we want the tool to be, the length doesn't really matter just for visualization and then the cut depth doesn't really matter either. Select that tool for use, this time we just have a constant spindle speed say 500 rpm and we might want the feed rate this time to be in units per minute rather than per rev and again we can switch on the coolant so the tool goes away to a ch tool change position and then we just tell it that sort of cycle we want so let's have a peck drill cycle and we're going to say 50 mil deep and we'll have a number of pecks so that produces the drilling cycle. If we wanted to, we could also switch on a billet. So if we go to set up billet, let's have a diameter of say 130, the length 125, the ball 0 and the Z position can be 0. Now when we switch on the tool envelope graphic, we see the billet and we get a nice simulation of what the tool is actually going to cut. Okay, on the right hand side here we've got a cycle time estimate and as you can see the spindle speed is increasing as it's going towards the centre line because we've switched on constant surface speed. This is the finishing tool and here comes the drill. Okay, so the last thing there would be to post process that. So we use the post processor, choose from the list of available post processor, of which there are quite a few, and then a new window is opened at the bottom. If I expand that, then that's the G code file, which is ready to go down to your machine tool. So you could either take this down on a memory stick if your machine has uh, got a USB port or if it doesn't then we can send the file through our built-in RS-232 comms package. So there we would choose the configuration file to match the machine. This is setting up the board rate, parity and so on. Set the machine ready to receive and then we can just simply uh, send that file down to the machine tool. So that's how we do that. In this video we'll show you how we can draw up